Well, hello there. My name is Jan Burt, and this is my podcast, The Burt Not Ernie Show, where we talk about God's promises and the hope those promises bring to our everyday lives. Whenever I meet somebody new, I introduce myself as Jan Burt and say, like Burt and Ernie, since it's easy to confuse my last name with a different one. And almost always, people smile when they think of Burt and Ernie. That got me thinking. I'm a Burt, and I'm not an Ernie. But how often do we live as if we're someone God never meant for us to be? Part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Hence the name, The Burt Not Ernie Show. I'm so glad you're here. Let's dig into God's promises. Well, hello there today. I'm so thankful that you're listening to the podcast for episode number 149. And I want to let you know that I've got some more details about the giveaway, the things that are going to be uh, gifted to several different winners, not just one, as my way of celebrating episode number 150, which is just around the corner. We're almost to episode 150. I'm giving away things like gift cards for coffee because, hello, it's coffee, an Amazon gift card. Uh, I'm going to give a gift certificate to an online Christian-owned small business. And who doesn't like supporting like the small biz owners that we all know and love? And like we all know somebody who is got who's running a small business, who's got a side hustle gig, something like that. Super excited to support that venture. And I've got some other things I'm going to be giving away too, like several prizes. And as I said, it's going to be one prize per winner. So it's not like one person gets the whole kit and caboodle because I think it's more fun when more people have a chance to win. It just, it just seems more fun. Like you're like, I could probably win something, so I'm going to give it a shot kind of a thing. At least that's how I think. So the details, all the deets, they're going to be in a link that's going to be right at the very top of the show notes and um, about how to enter. And it's, it's super simple. Like leave a comment on the post, either on Instagram or Facebook. That's it. That simple. And then I'm just going to use a randomizer, the little spinny wheel that makes a fun little tick, tick, kick sound to pick the winner. So that's the news update, housekeeping, whatever you want to call it. And now let's dig into one of God's promises. You're listening to the Burt Not Ernie Show podcast, part of the Spark Network, now playing in the Edify app. This is episode number 149. Okay, so after wrapping up this series on hot topics, which hopefully encouraged you to lean hard on God's promises, even when it feels hardest to do so. Now we're going to move on to a promise that is full of comfort. Uh, You know, of course, it's also full of hope because most of us end up much more hopeful. We're more optimistic after we've been on the receiving end of some comfort. And this verse, it has a whole lot of comfort for us. First, I want to define the word comfort, and then we're going to look at the promise from the Bible that offers us this comfort. Okay, comfort, to soothe in time of affliction or distress, to ease physically, relieve, to give strength and hope to, to ease the grief or trouble of, consolation in time of trouble or worry, a state or feeling of being less worried, upset, frightened, etc., during a time of trouble or emotional pain. Okay, so we've got our definition of comfort, and I think that we would probably all agree those things sound really good when we kind of hold them up next to something that feels or seems or is really, really not good. Here's our verse from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 12, and I'm going to read from the Amplified today. Isaiah 51, 12. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies and of a son of man who is made as destructible as grass? Okay, so I stumbled over that a little bit. I'm going to read it one more time because of my stumbling. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies? and of a son of man who is made as destructible as grass. Okay, did a little better that time. This is the Lord God Almighty speaking here in this verse from Isaiah 51. And it's super comforting. It's super comforting. But here's the catch. If we don't listen to what God says here, like if we refuse to hear it and heed it, I don't know that we can receive the comfort he has for us. I think we can miss it just by choosing to not heed it. 
God says this, I, even I, am he who comforts you. He's emphasizing that he is the one who comforts us. This seems to be important. I, even I, am he who comforts you. He is not a far off God, my friend. He's not out in the ether somewhere. He is right here with you. And he is the one who comforts you. When I'm in like a bad place, things have just been going really poorly and I'm feeling it like I'm down. I will, I will be honest enough to say that when I'm offered comforting words from, say, my husband, who is so encouraging to me, uh, maybe one of my children, also enormously supportive and encouraging of me, maybe a dear friend. I have some friends who go the second mile to encourage me. You know, that is so great. That encouragement, that comfort, those comforting words, they really do make a difference. When I get a surprise letter in the good old fashioned mailbox, like snail mail, that is really comforting. Someone takes the time to write something to you. That's fantastic. It's really, really comforting. An email, also super comforting. A text message, also very comforting. A comment, on a social media post that might have to do with like, say this podcast or something like that. Uh, Maybe a a review of a podcast, like I'll get a notification about a review or something. And it's like, oh, that's so encouraging. A book review. Yeah, all of those things are very comforting. I think that if you are, say, like an indie author, a speaker, a podcaster, something along those lines, or maybe even honestly, if you are a pastor, If you work in the ministry, maybe a women's ministry leader, a women's pastor, it's not the worst idea to have what I call like the happiness file. It can be just um, a place, a folder uh, on your phone. It can be another folder, a secondary one for emails that you get. So you can have like a happiness file folder in your Gmail or whatever you use. And then you can have like another one where you can just um, copy and paste text messages and things uh, just to open up a folder on your phone. Like it's where you put things that are encouraging, like positive reviews, copy and paste, um, notes, cards, etc. You can have an actual place where you keep your handwritten letters that you get, a happiness file uh, that you keep like tucked away in some corner of your room or something. And this isn't about vanity, not to be vain, because I personally, I want every bit of vanity in Jan's life, my life to hurry up and die already. I'm over it. I am too old to uh, just have any of that nonsense in my life. I want it dead and buried and gone, like crucify the flesh, as the New Testament says. But this, the point of this would be to be a comfort to you and to remind you, listen to me, my friends who are pastors, to remind you to keep going, keep serving Jesus. Because words like that, that someone takes the time to send to you, How do you know that it wasn't the Lord God Almighty that put it on their heart to write that note, to send that text, to send it your way, right? How do you know? In fact, let's just err on the side of caution based on what um, James says, that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. You know what? It's a good and perfect gift when you receive some encouragement from somebody in your church, somebody who listened to a message online, somebody... Um, you know, a friend who's just like wants to thank you for praying for them through a very hard season. Those kinds of things are great reminders. And I really do believe based on the book of James, they are from the Lord. So this isn't about vanity. This is about remembering that God wants you to keep going and he's going to send you encouragement. He's going to send you encouragement in a variety of different forms. God says this, I, even I, am he who comforts you. This is a fantastic promise. Do not quit serving Jesus. In whatever capacity you're serving him, please don't stop. Please don't give up. Keep that happiness file and remember the encouragement that the Lord has sent to you. Like reflect on that far more than you reflect on the things that that have a tendency to try to make you um, disenchanted with your work disheartened, maybe even a temptation to become bitter. Put that aside if you can and focus on your happiness file. So, okay. So how much better is it? Now, this is just like when a person encourages us, like somebody with skin on. And yes, it's true that this is at the Lord's leading. Almost, almost, I mean, we have to just believe 
that God is sovereign and everything good that we get comes from him because the Bible says that that is how it is. So that's how it is. So, but how much better is it when we really, really have the word of God speaking comfort to us? Do you know what I mean? Or like in your prayer time, you just get this overwhelming, uh, like a sense of a, maybe a specific answer from the Lord about something you've been praying about. Maybe during worship, you're just overwhelmed with the presence of God. It's amazing when God speaks comfort to us, and he does it in so many different ways. We can know that it is God's will to comfort us because we have these words from the pen of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. It's where he says that God comforts and encourages us in all our troubles, all of them, so that we will in turn be able to comfort others with the same comfort we have received. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the comforter in John 14, 26. So this is not a Jan-sized idea. I'm not reaching here, not in the least. This comfort from the Lord, this is 100% biblical. I am drawing directly from God's word. I'm not adding to it here. So you be encouraged that you have verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament assuring you that God wants to comfort you. And then he wants you to comfort others, but not with your own man-created mindset ways and means of comforting them, but with the same comfort that he gave to you, because that's going to be the kind of comfort that is powerful, lasting, packs a punch, and makes a real difference. God's promise to you here is that he comforts you. I, even I, am he who comforts you. This this feels pretty personal, doesn't it? I think God wants you to take this promise personally. He comforts you. That's pretty personal. This is present tense right now. And it's a promise that when tomorrow becomes today, when tomorrow becomes your present moment, this verse will still be present tense. He will comfort you. I, even I, am he who comforts you. This is an ongoing promise. On a continual basis, your God will comfort you. I mean it when I say that this feels personal and you should take it personally. I'm taking this personally. Yeah, please do. Because it is personal and it is personally meant for you right now at this very moment. Please take this personally. Isaiah 51 12 goes on to remind us of the truth that whomever we fear in life outside of the Lord God most high Anyone else that you fear outside of God, they're not meant to be feared. You and I are to fear the Lord and not man. This verse, it asks why we fear a man who dies, who is as destructible as grass. Well, that's an awfully good question, isn't it? Let's think on it for a moment, but let's be honest when we think about this. We tend to be fearful of people because we see what they can do to us. This might cost me my job. This person can take my job away, my livelihood, my income, my health insurance, my security. This person can do me harm in some manner that's like harm, harm, harmful harm, real harm. This isn't about, you know, you threatened it. When I was a teenager, we used to say this. This is so snarky, but this is this will give you a, a little bit of an insight into the 80s. Like somebody would, an adult, an authority figure, whatever. Somebody would say something that we would deem as like trying to boss us around, discipline us, whatever. And it was just this quick retort we had. We were just, we were not like some fantastic generation. We were brats. And I'm just speaking as a person who lived through the 80s. I was a brat. We were bratty. We would say, what are you going to do? Take my birthday away? Come on. And they would just look at you and you're like, that was your way of saying to them, it really doesn't matter what, what do you, what are you going to do to me? It doesn't matter what you do to me. I literally don't care. Like, what are you going to do? Take away my birthday? Okay, whatever. Like it really was so snarky, but that's kind of the point here. Like, what are they going to take? What, what can man take from you? Why are you afraid of people who are going to also die? They're like the grass, they're that destructible. We're not to fear them. We're to fear the one who never dies and who holds life and death in his very hands. He conquered sin and death and hell. Jesus did. Like this is he he's got the keys to the kingdom and the keys to Hades. So there's nobody else to fear. There's nobody else to fear. I would dare to say, yeah, 
God can take away your birthday, Jan. Hello, you little smart aleck when you were a teenager in the 80s. Like, seriously, don't fear the wrong people. There's only one to fear, and it's the Lord God Almighty. Okay, so here, as I'm recording in Kansas, it's June, so the lawn has to be mown. And technically, I could say moan or mowed in this sentence used in this particular tense. Uh, I'm going to go with moan. The lawn has to be mown all summer long, like again and again. So say I take a trip and I'm going to drive a little ways up the road up north and I'm going to visit the Flint Hills and I'm going to be out in like the natural grassland area that is not going to be cut short all summer long. I contrast my lawn with its regular trimmings and the grasslands. What's the real difference though when it comes fall? One is going to just grow all summer and never be cut shorter. The other is going to be trimmed again and again and again. One is going to blow in the breeze. The other hopefully will just be uh, green and short. And um, if my husband could have his way, a lot less weeds. The weeds are really bad this year. Uh, Like what's, but what's the difference come fall? At best, those grasslands, they're going to grow for a season. And my lawn clippings, they're dead and done for as soon as the mower skims across them. So That's the point of reference that God is giving us here. Fearing man is not sensible for us as believers, as Christians, because man has a lifespan that's kind of like a blade of grass in the final estimation of all things. And if that is God's final assessment of all things, that the length of a man's life is equivalent to like the width of the back of your hand, a blade of grass, the flowers of the field, which wither and fade away, that's, that needs to be our estimations as people who know this God personally. The word of the Lord endures forever. We need to bank on what endures forever and not fall prey to overwhelming, incapacitating fear, which is, which is where fear and, and worry and anxiety lead, to overwhelm and, and they just want to slit your throat, honestly, right? It's to incapacitate you to um, render you ineffective for anything that matters in life, really, to derail you, sideline you, distract you, discourage you. Let's just be done with that, especially when we're worried about like things that the Lord says they're not that important in the end equation. He is comforting us, and then he reminds us in this verse, promises that he is comforting us. It is him He is comforting us right now. The very God who says in the next sentence, don't be afraid of man who's so short-lived. They're they're like grass. Don't fear them. He wants us to have a right perspective. I think that also what he's saying is if you are letting fear, anxiety, worry consume your life, and let is a strong word. For many of us, it's like, it seems like we have no, no say in the matter, right? I want to encourage you to keep praying about it. Keep praying about it. Keep praying about it. Don't give into it. But don't allow that to be the loudest voice in the room. I think God wants us to know that the two cannot work well together. You're going to have trouble receiving his comfort if you're living in a state of like fear and stress. Okay. You cannot manage to go through this life in this world and never come up against hard things. That's important to note too. This verse is not promising you that there will be no hard things in your life ever. That's not how things work. Hard things develop good character. If you don't believe me, check out what it says in Romans chapter 5. It says it there far better than I ever could. So read that chapter if you'd like to look into the biblical basis for me saying that hard times develop good character. Hard things are not always bad things. However, scary things are not something that God wants you to live under with a sense of overwhelming doom and utter hopelessness. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Hard things, they're not always bad things because they can develop good character. But a hard thing is not really the same as a scary thing. We're all going to have moments where we get startled or scared. Um, You know, God put the fight or flight instinct response in us because it's important to sometimes be able to flee, to have an adrenaline kick. But we can sometimes blur those lines and think that living in a state of tension and high stress, cortisol overload, scary, 
right? That's really what that would be like physiologically. That's like scary. We equate that with hard things. We've blurred those lines. They're not the same thing. Scary things are not something God wants you to live under. He doesn't want you overwhelmed and feeling hopeless by scary things. That's not the same as a hard thing that will develop good character. This is not how we are to live when we follow Jesus. Hopeless and overwhelmed, those are not our adjectives. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. That's just the way it is in this life. What are we going to do when said stuff happens? Are we going to just give in to it, give in to fear, give in to despair? Or will we choose to receive the comfort that God is promising here in Isaiah? Uh, I'm going to go for the latter. That's my choice. I'm going to do my very best to opt for the latter and receive God's comfort. Now, when I'm really feeling the weight of something, that's the moment when I have to really choose to lean fully on the Holy Spirit, asking him to intervene, to help me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to choose belief over fear in this moment when I'm feeling the weight of this thing. And then all I can do then is just trust him to do what he has promised to do. And trust is, is belief. It really, truly is. Trust and belief go hand in glove when, it's, when we're talking about the kingdom of our God. Can you do me a solid? Can you find somebody this re- this week, this, this week, week is not a word. Can you find somebody this week to reach out to? There, I said it right that time. I didn't combine week and reach. Someone to reach out to this week and offer them something hopeful. Think about how God has comforted you in the past. Can you extend that comfort to someone else in the next few days? I think the answer is probably yes. So I'm going to rephrase it. Will you extend that comfort to someone in the next few days? Because you certainly can. You have received comfort if you're alive on this planet. Um, I know that to be true because it just absolutely is true. Can you extend it? Sure, you can. But will you? I hope that you will. I think you might be surprised what the Lord could do when you just pass on his comfort to other people. Okay, so this episode is a little bit shorter than usual. I'm going to wrap it up probably uh, right around 10 minutes quicker than usual, but that's that's okay because um, I've done some long-winded shows recently, so this one being shorter is okay. But as always, when I drop a shorter episode, I'm going to challenge you, but also encourage you with this. Keep your earbuds in, like the podcast is still playing, if you use earbuds, if, if not, Um, improvise on this a bit, but use the remaining time that would normally be part of the podcast episode. You're already thinking I'm listening for 30 minutes. Okay, Jan's going to be done in about 20 minutes. Okay, keep your earbuds in. Stay focused. This time is already allotted. Let's use it in this manner. Spend it in prayer, but also being quiet before the Lord, just in a listening posture to see what encouragement he has for you. He may have something he wants to speak to you or just wash over you with his love in a way that you can only experience when you take a few moments to be still and quiet yourself like a weaned child before the Lord. So this exercise, it will never add up to wasted or squandered time. It's really good to do this regularly. And right now I'm giving you the opportunity. I'm giving you permission. I'm setting you up for success. Just you and the Lord together in a quiet focused setting where you're poised to listen And you can share your heart with him and hear what he would say to you. I hope you'll do that today, right now. Thanks so much for listening today. Go ahead and check out that link for the giveaway. And also, don't forget, along with the 150th episode of the Burt Not Ernie Show, I'm dropping the first seven episodes of my new podcast, The Prayer Podcast with Jan L. Burt. The subject matter is pretty self-explanatory. It's a prayer podcast. I hope you'll check it out uh, when it launches on the next episode. And uh, follow, subscribe, leave me a review. I would love all that stuff. So have a truly blessed day, my friend. And remember that God's promise to comfort you is a promise you can depend on always, day after day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode that is part of the Spark Media Network that can now be heard on the Edify app. so glad you joined me for this episode of the Burt Not Ernie Show. It's an honor and a blessing to talk about God's promises with you. Have a 
fabulous day. And remember, part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Lord bless. I'll see you next time.